Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions from Plant Talk Radio. If you have a gardening question you'd like our host Fred Howard to answer, send him an email. The email address is fred at planttalkradio.com. Now for today's question. And uh, Fred, uh, Miranda sent us a great question this week, and she has a nice big flower garden in front of her house. She planted it three years ago, okay. and it's really beautiful in the spring and the fall, and she goes, it's even attractive in the winter. The problem is she doesn't really have any blooms in the hot heat of summer, in the July and okay. August period, except for her Shasta daisy. So she'd like to find something that packs a punch, as she says. Well, we can we can punch it good, because there is a significant list of things that can be done. Number one, uh, for the drier spots, a little higher perhaps uh, in, in the flower bed, baby's breath is a very generous plant with flower. My balloon flower, uh, which is, <laughs> hang on here, it's called platycodon, uh, as different from what I'm going to mention, but the balloon flower uh, is usually a dark bluish, a hint of purple in it. Uh, flowers literally pop up look like a, about half the size of a ping pong ball and then pop open in our beautiful just finishing flower then from there we go to bell flower which is quite different it's a campanula uh there are several varieties of it and they are well they're they're almost always in the blue range uh they stand oh anywhere from 12 to 18 inches or more high and unfortunately one of them got in my way the other day and i didn't realize it and i I no longer have a companion. Oh, <laughs> uh, it, it went in the trash, unfortunately. But then we go to catmint, which is just loves hot summer. Uh, now it's you have to watch it because it'll try to get away from you. Then coral bells, many, many, many colors of the foliage, and then they all have the little spike that maybe hits oh as much as fifteen or so inches tall. Uh, usually pinkish flowers and. A strong attractant to the hummingbirds. Crane's bill. Now, the crane's bill is the actual geranium uh, as a perennial. What we call geraniums are, are something very different. So crane's bill uh, is the main thing to look for, but it is a perennial geranium. Dahlias, both the annual types and the perennial types. Now, uh, both will need to be planted each year. The little annual stays at 18, 24 inches in height. Then the, the dinner plate dahlia is six or more feet tall. Fantastic big flowers. Delphinium. There are many, many colors of delphinium. And then right along with that is the larkspur, which is uh, very similar but technically different. I don't have luck with it, but the plant flax is a very good summer bloomer. I love them, but I don't have the right drainage, uh, at least where I've tried them. The little plant called heliotrope. Now, that will be an annual that you'll have to plant. Then for the shady spot, of course, hosta, uh, oh, 1,500 varieties minimum. Then lantana, again, you will have to plant it each year. You can, if you wish, plant it in a pot in the ground, let it grow, and then take it in and have it grow Pretty much all winter long, too. But it's, it, well, it's a beautiful flowering plant. English lavender, then the Asiatic lilies, and the big standard, uh, well, I'm going to call them true lilies. Then a plant called aconitum. Sometimes that's the considered the, the, the common name. It's also called monk's hood. And then gladiolus uh, is peacock orchid. That's one of the things that will give you some... Oh, it's it's minimal per the flower head, but it's a bright orangey red. Pincushion flower, scabiosa. Uh, <laughs> I I tend to use the common name on that because scabiosa doesn't sound particularly attractive. No, it sounds it, like it's <laughs> something you see the doctor for. Uh, yes, right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a plant that will come into bloom mid-spring and then go right on into fall uh, with, I'm going to call it, a good run of color. It doesn't get real spectacular at any one point in time, but they're light blue, uh, almost a pastel color, and quite prolific in the garden. Hang on, because then we have the speed wells, which are uh, a bunch of different heights and so on, flocks, 
uh, the, the creeping flocks of spring, long since gone, now just green as a ground cover. But then the tall flocks, if the deer will leave them alone, which they have not left mine alone. Uh, w- well, there's a good story on it. But anyhow, the tall flocks, which are coming into bloom very shortly, mine will be retarded because the deer came along and topped them. Uh, if you will, let's just say, pinched them back or ate them off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I wasn't there to hit them with a slingshot. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, the, the summer flocks are quite spectacular. And then the verbena plant is a, um, a, well, a good bloomer in the summertime. So those and probably a list at least that long beyond are things that you can get that will help you fill in some of the color. Uh, I, I hope that you were able to capture some of these names. Uh, they are um, easily found in garden centers. Most of them are perennials. And uh, we will put the list of summer bloomers Good. up Good. on our website, planttalkradio.com today. So check that out. Hey, thanks again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our other podcasts as well, the Plant of the Week podcast and the Plant Talk Radio podcast, all on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to sponsor a daily podcast, contact us at fred at planttalkradio.com. To find out more about Fred Hauer and Plant Talk Radio, visit our website, planttalkradio.com. We've had a lot of questions about how we started the Dollar Saving Divas and why we do this. I know. Well, I'm Kelly. And I'm Leslie. And we are the Dollar Saving Divas. But we do more than just dollar saving saving tips. But we started talking about this. It was 15 years ago when we used to work together. together. Mm -hmm. And I I just remember we we started it because we both like the same kind of food. Yeah. So we would go in in search of the... lunch every day. Lunch every day. Let's find the best chili. Let's find the best crab cake. Remember, we would just go place to place and we would compare and it was just our it was our fun little lunch break every day it was a joke that that we said you know we ought to do this sometime for like a radio show or and we both at the time we both had young kids and so we were trying to find ways to you know even cut costs and still provide all those things that you want to provide for your family well and and live within your budget and and you know we used to I used to do a lot of events and marketing so you know we we've done everything from tricks and tips on you know party planning and how to decorate a table to different foods i mean we've traveled around the community to lots of different yeah we've discovered some things in the community that you know we didn't know were there we thought well gosh other people should know exactly shopping great shopping places we even we even went took a vacation to naples florida which right i I think we should do more of that travel absolutely yeah Yeah. we should do more. i think some international would be good Maybe. But I think it's just it's a lot of our life experiences. A lot of life. It's a lot of a lot life. A lot of life experiences. We're not going to say how many combined, but <laughs> sharing I, that with other people. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say we, we could you know, together. It would be like no, we're sen- not going to say okay, that. I'm not even going to go there. I think it's really funny. I mean, we're now actually going and looking for sponsors. I mean, people are actually following us, and they're you know, I know. It's, we. It's amazing. We've got. I mean, it's like <laughs> people do want to hear what we have to say. <laughs> And actually, I've heard some people even take notes. They have to replay it because, like, like I want to know where that really good happy hour is. And they like, right. they, well, everybody wants to know where a really good happy hour is. Well, and we're, we're really good because we know where all the good happy hours are. Just ask us any place you live. We all can, those years of work, yeah. you need to know a good lunch spot and a good happy hour spot. And, and never the two shall meet because <laughs> you shouldn't be drinking at lunch. <laughs> But it's just been really fun, and I, I think we're really expanding the things we're doing, which is, which is, you know, I never thought that people would actually listen yeah. to us. Well, I think that's the fun part is we are doing what's fun to us. Exactly. So it's not like it's work. Right. We're just having a good time. And, and talking about it. <laughs> Talk about, and maybe we shouldn't be talking about some of the good times that we well, have. All right, probably a little censorship would be good. <laughs> well, I think we, you know, we go bleep, bleep <laughs> in between things. So, these podcasts are really twenty minutes, but we edit them down to eight. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> yeah. there's so many things there's that should go in there. Yeah, you know, bleep, bleep. You know, it's like that. What is it? That, what do they do on the um, on TV? The, you know, it's like the. The, right. The lag time or the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have to have a 10-second th- delay. That's it, a 10-second <laughs> delay. But we've really had fun, and so I hope people continue to listen to us. Yeah. And if You know what? And if people have things that they thought would be, make a good podcast, 
they really ought to, you know, contact us. Let us know, because we're always open to new adventures. Yeah, but do they, <laughs> do they include travel, food, and, <laughs> and <drink>. alcohol? <laughs> yeah. And we're down. We're good to go. <laughs> Circle270media.com.